This is the wonderful Mrs. Thelma Scott. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. I just always have to say this, you guys. It's a great day in Houston. Why do I say it's a great day in Houston? Because this is the day, you guys, that I've never seen before. So I am blessed to wake up and see a beautiful, sunshiny day. And I'm so happy and so excited to have my uh, co-host, uh, Leona Phyllis, is always here to support me. And I'm just so honored to have her. And we she's going to tell you a little bit about our guest. We have a special guest uh, that's on the phone, but we have a special guest that's here in the station today. And I want to thank her for uh, just getting up this morning and coming to be a part of our show. So, Ms. Eliza Powers, do you want to tell us a little bit about just just, just give us a short message and say you're glad to be here now. And we're going to go right <laughs> into our guest because we have a guest that's waiting, okay? I am thank you. super happy and super honored to be here uh, with you, Ms. Scott. It, it is a gorgeous day. I'm looking outside. The sun is shining i'm i'm happy it's beautiful that's how yes. okay attorney phyllis my co-host we'll turn it back over to you because i know we have an important guest that's waiting to tell us a little bit about himself yes tim gillen is with us on the phone he is with the everett and austin project it is a 5013 uh, c3 registered co uh, charity and mm -hmm. what they do is they bring awareness and raise money for children that have uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy mm -hmm. that are living in the sub-Saharan uh, Africa. Okay. Oh, so, that's awesome. Uh, and the way he does this is right. unique, um, and I'll let him explain that to you. Hi, Tim. <laughs> this is Leona Phyllis. We are so glad to have you on the radio show. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So I was wanting to uh, have you describe to everyone uh, what you do to bring awareness to uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Yeah, well, we do a lot of things online, and we also do our big thing we do is called Hike for Duchenne. Mm -hmm. And, well, this is the eighth Hike for Duchenne, and it's lasting all season, the whole entire autumn season from September 22nd through December 21st, and mm -hmm. people can do as many miles as they want. Myself, my goal is 500 miles for the whole entire three months, and so far I have 422, I think. Oh, oh that's God. awesome. Let's give him a hand, you guys. <laughs> wow. Oh, that is awesome. I'm We're trying so to do the, of you. I'm trying to do the math. How long, uh, how many <laughs> miles do you hike in a day? Well, average, I try to average seven miles a day. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And I guess you have the backpack and the, uh, what is it, yeah. ProGo, or what is that called, the camera mm -hmm. that you that you have on? Because um, I see GoPro. the GoPro. GoPro. So do okay. you, so you no. post from um, different sites throughout the day. I've seen some beautiful pictures uh, on wow, Facebook. You. Can you tell uh, our listeners how they can find you on Facebook? On Facebook, we have a group. Um, it's called High Production Group, and please do join us. I'd love to have you in the group. All we right. have people, we have po people posting in there every day from around the world. We have three people in Iceland who are doing High Production, and we have several people in Kenya and Uganda who mm -hmm. are doing High Production, Cameroon, Nigeria, and also in the Philippines. Oh, and wonderful. We have people, That's amazing. Yeah, we have, mm -hmm. Thank you. We have people in the U.S. as well, in Maryland, and also in Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and even in Texas, where you guys are. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. I think he's uh, uh, pointing out that we could probably do some hiking. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. yes they that, they sure. probably can do some hiking, <laughs> but just take Miss Scott out. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, well, you could do anything. You could walk, you could run, you could hike, you could bike, you could swim. I mean, I have people doing all sorts of things for their miles. Um, right. And including people in wheelchairs or, you know, they, when they go around walking around the block with their with their parents, that counts. That, that's, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. That counts um, towards hike for Duchenne. Right. So we touched a little bit on what Duchenne is. Could you explain to our audience about Duchenne muscular dystrophy? Yeah, Duchenne is one of the kinds. There's over 40, some oh, okay. people say over, over 60 kinds of muscular dystrophy. And so Duchenne is one of the harshest kinds, and so is ALS. 
um, or Lou Gehrig's disease. So Duchenne, it's from, it's onset is from birth, meaning it's, it's genetic, and it's on the X chromosome. And so then it, it's either passed down through the mother or else it's just a random mutation that happens at, at birth on the X chromosome. And, and so people with Duchenne and all muscular dystrophies, but um, with Duchenne, the, um, the muscles gradually weaken. Um, there, there are several signs like large calf muscles. Mm-hmm. that are not really muscular. They're just like deposits from the cells dying because that's what happens. The cells in the body um, are lacking a dystrophin protein. So then they just die off and they kind of deposit in the calf. So um, that's one of the signs. Another sign is um, the young children, when they're still walking, they uh, walk with a, a very arched, Gate. back mm-hmm. a gate yeah so that like they hold their their um their clavicle their back at the top yeah. of their back they hold it they like stretch it backwards to hold their balance and eventually by age 10 around age 10 is when they they stop being able to walk and um then by around age 14 is when they are you know they stop being able to raise their hands off of their off of their lap or off of their wheelchair table or, or whatever. So, and then there's, there's a short life expectancy. Um, when my kids were diagnosed in 97, they, we were told that they had 15 to 20 years to live. Right. And, and nowadays with expensive medicine, you know, if you happen to be well off, um, then uh, the, the children can live into their 30s and 40s. Now, I've seen where uh, it's rare. <laughs> Very rare. there's a lot of uh, opportunities for kids in this country to be part of uh, medical uh, experiments mm-hmm. that may um, help these kids uh, achieve that longevity that you were talking about. Trials, yeah. There are the trials. some trials that are, that are going on. And, um, you know, the MDA and, and Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy and many other Cure Duchenne, many other um, big U.S. organizations for um, Duchenne and muscular dystrophy donate millions of dollars a year for research. So um, it's often been said, and if you remember Jerry Lewis, he used mm-hmm. to do the telethons right. on Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been, ra- you know, we've been raising money for research for millions and millions, uh, I mean, for many years, over over 50, do- uh, 50 years. And right. millions and millions of dollars is going to research. So. But your uh, your particular uh, charity focuses is, uh, focuses on children that are in the sub Saharan portion of Africa. Mm-hmm. Right, and and we because quality of life is so poor there anyway in general, mm-hmm. um, and, and that's something that our organization is focusing on is quality of life Mm -hmm. Um, there are many organizations that are donating to research and that's going on and we we pray and hope for a cure Um, but uh, you know we all do and we want that Mm -hmm. but as far as you know there's many in africa that are undiagnosed they're they're suffering in silence we're trying to reach them it's very very difficult Um, but we have identified you know around 50 Kids, which there should be thousands of kids identified, but right. but mm-hmm. there right now we have about 50 kids with Duchenne identified that we are serving. We are giving them wheelchairs and physical therapy. Food is, and you know, you wouldn't think of it and know it, but but um, the first people we we reached, well, their names are the Kayonga mm-hmm. Kayongas, and and they um, Paul Kayonga had had five boys born with Duchenne and Mm -hmm. by the time I had heard about him he had already lost two of two of his boys like I have lost two of my my two boys and he had three more and so the news report I saw Mm -hmm. was just you know terrible poverty that they were living in and I thought you know and he said I I don't know what to do I'm just leaving them up to the Lord and I I said wow I you know, I was really, really moved three years ago, and I and I said I got to go help this guy, and and I did. It took a year, um, 
But I finally made it over there to Uganda and helped them. We brought them wheelchairs. We cemented their floor. Um, so we do a lot of things. We, mm-hmm. When we first reached them, we brought them mm-hmm. uh, some food, and the boys were sitting on the floor, and, and um, one of our volunteers brought out a bag of rice, and and um, he said, "This is rice," and you know, because they're learning English. So mm-hmm. so the boys were so excited they said, "Rice," <laughs> you know, with this with this high high pitched gleeful voice, and they were so ecstatic, just organically ecstatic, about mm-hmm. being able to eat some rice for a little while. Right. You know, <laughs> it's just stunning how grateful they are when we bring them these things that in America they seem small, but to over there, they're huge, and so, you know, that's what that's what we're about is trying to bless them and and help them to uh, have a better quality of life. Yes, oh, that's wonderful. Well, how, we, thank, thank you we, so thank much. You. How can we You're actually welcome. give more information to people so they can contribute to your uh, very worthy cause? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for asking. And and um, I would say that probably the easiest way to get people to onto our site is to go to hikefordushan.com and it brings you to the main site which is the Everett and Austin project.org and it's named after my son Everett and Austin mm-hmm. <laughs> and and so um, yeah that's the best way we're on Facebook um, there's there's many links on Facebook where we're sharing sharing lots and lots of things on we're on LinkedIn we're on Twitter we're on Instagram we're on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Oh, okay. with wonderful. Over, Y'all all over, over the place. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, over 100 videos, you know, from hiking to um, experiences to, to also the children and recipients themselves. In fact, mm-hmm. last night I, I just posted a, a video today from a Duchenne mother in Kenya, and she, and she was just so thankful that we were able to give her some money. We've given her almost $1,000 to help start right. a business. That's that's one of our things is to to help them mm-hmm. start a business so they can be self sustainable. Was and that a livestock mother, donation? So I'm sorry. Was that a livestock donation that you did? We did a goat. Uh, we donated a goat to them as well as, as mm-hmm. the agriculture uh, seed, seeds and everything, and and we helped them to build the 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 uh, barn. It's not really a barn. It's it's like where they can keep the goat, you know. Mm-hmm. So they they need their money for that too, and and they are milking the goat. And the boy, his name is Caleb, Caleb Gitau, and and he is drinking milk now. Good. So and he he loves it. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really That's appreciate. What we're about. Thank you, you know, so and, much for everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Mrs. You're Scott, welcome. did you have anything you wanted to ask? No, I just want to thank him so much for the beautiful and amazing work that he do to change mm-hmm. the lives of these students. It's so important that people mm-hmm. understand and know about your organization. So we're just here to support you, and we'll be also sharing your information as well. But thank you so thank much you. for being a part of our show today, Embracing Diversity, and we wish Absolutely. you many, many blessings during the uh, holidays, Okay. Again. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Thank and happy you. Thanksgiving to you as well. And if we don't see you, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you. All right. Same to you. Thanks for having me. Bye. And next, we have another guest that's calling in. Now, we're very grateful that we have Liza here in the, uh, uh, actually in the studio right yeah. now. So, Liza, tell us a little bit th- about your uh, project with TSU. So we have something known as the Community Environmental Leadership Program. But first of all, uh, Miss Liza, first of all, Miss Liza, you you need to tell us your name. I know we we're saying it, but we need to tell your name. We need to hear your name. Now, how you come to know Miss Scott? Okay. Yes. So (laughs) yes, I'm Liza Powers, and I work uh, at Texas Southern University's Community Environmental Leadership Program. Yes. Can you say that again, though? What is it now again? Community Environmental Leadership Program. We call it KELP for short. All right. Uh Yes. So we work with community leaders and members that are uh, interested in knowing more about Mm -hmm. uh, the environmental impact uh, of us living in Houston and and uh, we go through different types 
of environmental issues. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a summer program. Right. And it goes from uh, June to August. <laughs> and uh, Miss Scott was in our inaugural class. Oh, she right. She was a right. star right. pupil. Because I graduated. Yes, she graduated. <laughs> and I'm so happy I got my certificate. I'm going to be put on my cap and gown and get my picture. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, we're we're excited. We're already planning next year's mm -hmm. um, program, and okay. uh, it tackles environmental justice. It 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 gets to the root of the issues, and we right. learn more about it. So, mm -hmm. I'm 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 excited. I was telling Liza earlier. I was in the environmental uh, law. Uh, society in uh, law school, so I'm I'm gonna take a good look at your program. Yes. Where can we find more information? Is it available online or? Yes, well, it'll be uh, the registration for it'll start in April. In April. So, okay. okay, yeah, so it's it's a selective group of people. I think we target about thirty to forty students because we don't want the class to be so large; it's not right. interactive. Mm -hmm. Right. So we'll be putting more information and. And this won't be the last time you hear or see from me. I'm, I'm, uh, right. I help Miss Scott uh, with Safe Diversity. Yes. Right. So uh, we'll keep you guys in the loop and let you know right. more about it as it comes. It's so some of the topics, was it just related to the Houston area for environmental justice well, or we globally? Are, or? Yeah, it's globally. Okay. But, but as you can imagine, Houston mm -hmm. is kind of an epicenter for things that are happening, right. such as flooding. Oh. Um, so we look at mm -hmm. uh, we look at stormwater flooding versus bayou flooding because okay. mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a right. really good rainstorm and the streets flood and it's right. not that the bayous are over their banks or anything mm -hmm. it's just a good hard rain right. um, and you know that's due to all the concrete that we have right. so mm -hmm. we we t we we differentiate between the types of flooding right. we talk about. Um, water quality, air quality, right. soil quality, mm -hmm. um, and um, how it impacts us, you know, right. living in that. Right. And it's so knowledgeable because I learned a lot by being in a class mm -hmm. that I really wasn't even aware of. And also, it includes clean air because yes. I have a lot of problems at, uh, in my area where I live because there's gas smell all the time. And also, there's a, a, a crushing plant r right behind me next door. So I'm learning about the area because, uh, you know, I, I, it's our right to live in a safe and healthy environment and, and breathe clean air. Absolutely. So I've learned so much by being a part of this class. I've learned a lot, a lot. Of, thank you guys for mm, yes. recruiting me to be a part of because I've learned a lot. And that has become a uh, safe diversity campaign is, is yes. environmental justice and climate change. That's has come my campaign to work with educating our students and our low to moderate income families about environmental yeah. justice and climate it's, change. It's mm -hmm. genuinely a crisis that we, we need okay. to approach and attack at this time climate change okay Good. thank you so much and i think that we have our next guest is that right attorney phyllis yes mr otis l scott right uh, and when i first met him i, I had I, it's explained to him uh i said now nah, uh I'm going to have you on. I said, but just so much. I said, you have my husband's name. He said, oh, I do. <laughs> I said, my husband was Otis Scott. So he said, okay, well, well, well I'm going to be honored to be on Miss Scott's show. <laughs> so thank you so much. He's calling us from San Antonio, and he's also a friend of my good friend, and, and that is with diversity and inclusion. So uh, we, uh, Dennis Kennedy is a part of our program. So we are so honored to have you, Mr. Scott, on today. So Go ahead, and I think uh, Attorney Phyllis has some questions because today we're also celebrating National Veterans Day. My husband was a veteran, so I have this award, the Otis Scott uh, a Veterans Hero Award of the month. It's why I honor veterans, two or three veterans every month. So I'm so honored to have Mr. Scott a part of our program, and we'll be honoring him as one of our veterans of the month for December. Yes. Okay, Mr. Scott. All right, thank you, Mr. Scott, for having me on ready with the bang. 99.5 FM, I appreciate it, and uh, look forward to answering any questions that, that you may have. Well, first off, when were you, uh, when did you serve in the uh, Air Force? I served in the Air Force from, from 1972 to, to 1996. Oh, wow, Ooh. very nice. I had a, 20, I had a very good 24-year 24 24 year career in the United States Air Force. All right, and now you're in San Antonio? Yes, ma'am, but I'm continuing to serve in the community in many areas, uh, especially in the 
uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion arena, as well as the human resource arena. So we do have um, students that uh, Safe Diversity um, are a nonprofit, Mrs. Scott's nonprofit. They uh, sponsor students, uh, graduating seniors, um, Mm -hmm. to uh, earn scholarships to go to college. And the main focus for these kids is to learn about diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion in the workforce. Could you talk to us a little bit about uh, what you do on a regular basis uh, with diversity, equity, and inclusion? Yes, uh, I work with the Texas Diversity Council, which has transitioned now to the National Diversity Council, but I serve on the Greater San Antonio Advisory Board of the Texas Diversity Council as the vice president, but I previously I was the president several years back, and they'd asked me to come back on in the vice president role due to the travel of the president, which I was happy to do because, you know, one of the things we want to make sure of is that we get out the information and we make sure that people are aware of what transpires in the diversity, equity, and inclusion arena. And when I talk about that, I mean not only from the standpoint of uh, the students that are now, you know, in college and going to be transitioned to the workforce, but also, you know, for minority women and veterans that are represented, you know, in the diversity, equity, and inclusion arena. So uh, this has now been uh, topics that have been brought to the forefront, and I understand that you can go to college and get a degree um, regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in the workforce. So what challenges do you see young people that are graduating from high school and they're trying to get uh, jobs? What challenges do you see that they may face um, if they're of a different color or from a different, uh, have a different background than um, the norm? You know, I think probably some of the, some of the biggest challenges they're going to face is adapting to the workforce, you know, that up to day and, some of those, the, the good part, you know, like can honestly say this, the good part is that a lot of the students that are, that are coming out of college now, you know, they don't refer to individuals. When they talk about somebody, they refer to them as, this is my friend, not as this is my gay friend or this is my black friend or this is my Hispanic right. friend, this is my veteran friend. And they refer to them as just as my friend. They don't right. see the, those barriers that, that we've had to deal with in the past, you know, such as, uh, you know, color, sexism, racism, things of this nature. Mm-hmm. They don't run across those. The good part is that they're not seeing that. However, as they go into the workforce, right. they're going to have to face some of those challenges because we, we've not completely um, diversed ourselves of those challenges that currently in the workforce. Yep. I, I, I actually have an elder, um, an older uh, relative, and she... She gets surprised when uh, I'll talk about my friend Sherry, and then she'll meet <laughs> Sherry, and Sherry's black. She's like, "Why didn't you? T-? Not that it's anything, but why didn't you tell me she was she's black?" I'm well, like, "Well, t- we don't talk about matter. that. It just does, you know. She's just Sherry, you know. <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter with the color of the skin. That's why I like this show so. And uh, when I first came, like four years ago, uh, Mr. Uh, Mike when. Um, my son and I brought him to him to do the show. He said, well, I need to make sure that Radio the Bun is diverse. So I said, well, okay. I said, I, I have a show I've been working on. I want to do diverse, uh, embracing diversity. He said, well, you got it. Because I love what he wanted to be, embracing diversity. So this show is, we reach out to all nationalities, to, and we invite all nationalities. We just don't invite just black people. We invite all people. So it's so important to teach the kids that diversity and inclusion means a lot. They just want to be included. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That they want to be a Absolutely. part of something. They want to belong. As you said, they want to belong. So it's very important mm-hmm. that um, I choose, uh, that I chose. I think the first uh, we invited Turner Phillips on like four years ago. I don't think she left. She came on one show and she ain't <laughs> left. <laughs> I said, I need you to be my co-host. She said, well, you got it. So so I love it. So Mr. Maud Khan, he was very satisfied with my, the, uh, the person I chose to be my co-host. So it's so important that our youth and and eat our families to understand that diversity and inclusion is so important that we include everybody, that they be a part of it to be alone. Absolutely. Right? So you know, one of the biggest challenges that, that we face right now, you know, you hear people talk about equity, but, right. you know, 
you have to you have to look at both equity and e- and equality. Right. Yes. And that's the challenge that that we that we face now, you know, as a society. So one right. one of the groups that we like to include um, are people who have special needs. Um, Correct. That's, yes. Um, something that I like to focus on. And so out of your programs, um, what do you do um, or, or how do you approach it if somebody has physical or mental disabilities right. but need to be included? You know, one of the things that, that we look at, and I'm going to, you know, talk especially focus on, on veterans, is uh-huh. that especially the challenges they face are uh, unemployment, homelessness, uh, poor medical health, Right. Uh, physical, you know, injuries, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, lack of education. Mm-hmm. So when you have, you know, your, your special disabled vets, you know, coming back, you know, we need to be able to, especially right. whether it's through the, through, the, through the Veterans Administration or some other agency that provides those services for veterans, you know, we need to be able to direct our veterans to those. Resources. And we need Good. to talk to them in the sense that, you know, it's, it's not a thing of being mm-hmm. proud or anything, you know, like you've, in the military, you tend to uh, really, you know, if you get injured someone on this line, you know, it's kind of like, and I hate to use this term, but it's kind of like, you know, okay, just suck it up, just, you know, go on with it, you know, don't complain about it. Right. And as as they start to age and as they start transitioning out of the military, all of a sudden, you know, now right. that body that, that was young and youthful is no longer young and youthful, and you're starting to feel those aches and pains. Right. So, <laughs> yes. So how do, they, how do we go about, you know, getting them the help they need? Mm-hmm. And that's that's the that's the big thing. You know, we need to let them know that mm-hmm. you, you don't have to be, you know, proud or anything on this line. Mm-hmm. Pick out the what you need. You know, whether whether it's you know you come back and you know you have PTSD or you have some right. type of other illness mm-hmm. or or in some in some cases you know you you've gotten addicted, whether it's alcohol or some type of drug. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, get that help that you need. Right. And and there are plenty of agencies, and this is what we need to look at. There are plenty of agencies, especially here in Texas, that, that provide those services. And we need to be the ones to help direct them in the right direction so they can get those services so that we don't end up having veterans that are, that are committing suicide or that, okay. are, that, are, that are, you know, going into using other substances and things this line to try and cope with society today and ending up on the street as homeless. Because you probably well know a third of our homeless, you know, people now are, are veterans. So, you know, we need to really address that issue uh, here and here, not only in Texas, but in the U.S. Right. That's so important. It's because our organization, Safe Diversity, is partnering with um, NAMI Greater Houston, uh, National Mental Health on Alliance here in Houston. So we, we work with that organization because we work with a lot of our students that's dealing with anxiety and depression, you know, dealing with mental health. So we talk about that every month, our program having a professional that talks about mental health every month to our families and our students because there's so much going on. You know, the kids, due to the pandemic, the kids has been locked down for a long time. So they're dealing with depression and they're dealing with um, anxiety. So that's so important that we bring it on every month to be able to talk about that because we work with high school youth. And it's so important that they know that there's hope out there, there's, that there's help. Uh, you know, they don't have to go to the uh, the last resort of committing suicide, that there's hope out there to help them. So that's very important that we talk about um, the help with, with NAMI Greater Houston that's here, that, that's here to reach out to veterans, family members, youth. They, they reach out to everyone that's always, that there's hope and always a, a place for you to go when they have those problems. So, Mr. Right. Yes. Yes. You know, and- and we have to really, you know, set the example for them and be that be that bridge, what I like to call a bridge for them, whether whether it's being as a mentor, whether it's being as a friend, or whether it's just, you know, being someone they can come to and, and talk to and we can coach them and help them, right. you know, understand that, that there are challenges they're going to face. Because, mm-hmm. you know, like I, tell, like I tell everybody, you know, in life we go through peaks and valleys. Right. And, you know, there are many times we're at those peaks and, and life is life is looking really good. Mm-hmm. But when we're down in that valley and we're trying to get out of that valley and look up, sometimes mm-hmm. it's tough to do that. Right. But we need to be the one to reach out a hand to them and help, mm-hmm. help pull them up and guide them in the right direction. All righty. Well, thank you so, so very much for taking out your busy schedule and your time to uh, be able to uh, work with us today. We really appreciate it. And, again, uh, thank you. And if anything that we can uh, do for you, uh, let us know. And please tell my friend hello 
Uh, um, Dennis Kennedy is a part of Safe Diversity. He sponsors scholarship for the students for the I think the last five years. So he's a part of us, and we thank him so much for all of his time, and and we thank what he do for the community and all. So you tell Mr. Dennis Kennedy, uh, Miss Scott says hello and thank him because I, if it wasn't for, been for Mr. Dennis Kennedy, I would have never met you and been able to bring you on, Mr. Otis Scott. So you take care and be blessed, and to you, Safe Diversity and Ready to Bone would like to say Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. All right. Thank you. And please have a Thanksgiving yourself and to those in the greater San, greater Houston. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Scott. You so much. But All at right. this time, we have some time left, and we're going to get into the good part. But we've turned it for us. We're going to talk about our our, our main as as uh, KHJU Channel Eleven always tell us uh, the our meat and potatoes. Okay, so no. our meat and potatoes are our students. So we're going to talk about our students and and talk about what we do. In our scholarship program, we have a scholarship program. We have a Safe Diversity Three Pillar Scholarship Program. I mean, a uh, uh, scholarship. We also have the George Harris uh, Jenkins Scholarship, and we also have the Barbara Jordan and Devil Scholarship. So we have three scholarships that our students are applying for throughout the year. But guess what? Hmm. They have to follow the criteria. They cannot get any of these scholarships if they follow our criteria. So we have a virtual uh, workshop every month. And then on the third Tuesday, then they have a, a, a Safe Diversity Ambassadors meeting where all students are invited to the meetings to follow up what, what's going on. But each month, the students are given a topic of, that they have to do, a 200-word essay, and they have to draw a, 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 an art. They have to create an art. Mm-hmm. So we have our September, and I'm going to let uh, my executive assistant is here today. I'd like for her to say something uh, She's going to tell you her name and all and, and what she does with Safe Diversity, and she's going to be able to name our students. I'm putting her to work. Okay, oh. Ms. Jocelyn, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? And then you can tell them what you do with Safe Diversity, okay? Okay. So my name is Jocelyn Flores. Can you speak up a little bit before we can hear you? The mic closer. There you there. go. There we there. go. There we go. Nice. So my name is Jocelyn Flores. I am executive assistant to Ms. Velma Scott in yes. Safe Diversity. So I help her with all her needs. Mm -hmm. Now, what else you do besides that for me? You do something else, right? I do shirts, balloons, promotional stuff. Now, Mm -hmm. tell us the name of your company. Flow Events and Flow Creations. Nice. Okay. Now. And, no, uh-huh. So uh, you, you've you been hands-on with uh, Mrs. Scott and working with the uh, scholarship candidates. Mm-hmm. And can you give us a little, uh, tell us what's going on with the September essay and art contest winner. So our first winner for September is Kobe Headnot. He's a senior at Eisenhower. And he was the one who won for our September and essay and art contest let's give him a hand right. you guys all right kobe Sikavion. uh kobe Sikavion. yeah yes. thank you kobe so i hope you're listening the kids are out for thanksgiving holiday but i know <laughs> they don't mean they're listening okay <laughs> <laughs> they probably got many things they're doing but anyway but they're a good chance to go back and listen to the radio show uh, right yes okay, okay then, Jocelyn, who is uh-huh. our october winner our October winner was a Stephania Yepis from Westfield High School. All right, let's mm-hmm. give her a hand. All and, right. And Aaliyah Calloway from MacArthur High School. From All MacArthur. Right. All Thank right. You. Let's give these students a hand. They're doing a wonderful job. And, and, and Jocelyn going to be staying on them uh, along with our intern. Can you tell that this is our intern for this year, for, for 2020? For 21 22, we have uh, our intern. Can you tell us our in- intern? Stephania Yepis. Stephanie right. is our intern, and she works closely with 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 uh, Miss Foot and also with Miss William. Also, she calls all the students and email and make sure they stay on point and they do their essays and do their art on time. So we're just so honored to have these students, and and I just want to say for our program to continue of what we do uh, with our scholarship program and with our internship program. You know that uh, and. Uh, Attorney Phyllis, are we going to have you? You have to do a video before you leave. We just mm. wanted to say, if y'all know what, what Tuesday, what, what, what Given Tuesday is coming up on November the 30th, right? So we're just asking for your support uh, with a donation to help us continue with our scholarship program and our internship program. And also, this program that that uh, 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 Teresa helps us with at Westfield High School, I have a program at Westfield High School, and it's called 
the community uh, service hours program. Mm -hmm. That's why I have 10 students in that program, and they do community service hours, and they have to get 120 hours a week to be able to graduate. So I'm honored to have those students in the program, and they do a lot of work. They do um, uh, the social media for safe diversity, and they also do uh, our uh, uh, cards, uh, our Thanksgiving cards, our Christmas cards, our Mother's Day cards, and our Father's Day cards. And they just did, you guys, and, and I left them on the table. I was, I was intending to bring some of them. They did such a beautiful, beautiful Happy Thanksgiving cards for our seniors at Cypress Wood Estate. They was awesome. And I left them. So those are things that they do virtually to get credit for uh, being a part of that program. And it's called any of the kids. Uh, I, I don't know, Jocelyn, uh, if we're going to open up to to other uh, uh, school districts. But right now the program is housed at Westfield High School. It's where the students uh, get a community service house credit for, for doing work for safe diversity. So in order to continue our uh, three programs that we work with, we will ask for your donation. And we want to hold up the flyer. I'm going to hold up the flyer. <laughs> Oh, no, we're going to hold the flyers. So we'll say, give yes, it. Yes, hold up the flyer, turn the pillow so they can see it. Uh, that's the flyer. And it got the name of our scholarship program. It's uh, our scholarship programs. Safe Diversity Three Pillar Scholarship Program. And uh, the Georgia Harris Jenkins Scholarship Program is for college students, you guys. Oh. But you have to follow criteria. I mean, you still have to zoom into our monthly meetings. And we also have the Bobby Jordan Endeavor Scholarship Program. So you can go online to our website. It's www.safediversity.org. Or you can uh, send us an email. And it's at info at safediversity.org but please contact us in, in the Zoom in, in order to uh, text to donate it's 444-321 oh no 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 it's 44321 uh, 44321 so you text the word all together safe diversity okay. to the I'll number 44 to explain it to y'all but we can do this because we're looking right. for donations for Tuesday go ahead okay. turn it so for giving Tuesday on the 30th of this month you would uh do, to donate by text, you would text the word Safe Diversity to the number 44321. You can also go to our website and find ways to donate. Mm -hmm. uh, we also ask if you use Amazon to order things, select Safe Diversity Communities as your charity. You can use smile.amazon.com to have uh, donations made to Safe Diversity. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you're on Facebook, you can choose a charity and invite people that follow you or are friends with you uh, to donate to Safe Diversity Communities. We're trying to uh, raise some money for the end of the year so we can have right. scholarships that we can hand out come this summer. Uh, we are looking forward to helping out these children who are doing the work. They're, they're coming to the uh, outreach events. By Zoom, <laughs> right? By Zoom. And they're doing their their they're writing their Scott their um, essays and they're making their art pieces and so they're putting in the time and effort and we'd right. like to reward them so help us uh, with these uh, students. Okay, Jennifer, can you sh hold that up just one more time so they can see that? Okay, go. and have it. All righty. Yep. This is the flyer. It says Giving Tuesday, and that's November the 30th, 2021. We're looking for your donation to help us to continue our program. We have so many, so many success stories that, uh, that we're going to be sharing. We'll be sharing a story each, uh, each <laughs> month and reps our students uh, asking you for a donation for Giving Tuesday. Um, All righty. Do we have any other uh, uh we're uh, trying oh, to that yes. we need to Okay, yes, well, go yes. ahead. Well, Jocelyn has some information for uh, this is Awareness Month, and Jocelyn doesn't want to talk. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay trying to We have you got it. Alzheimer's Awareness Month. So, yes, a big thing about the Embracing Diversity show is that we uh, help uh, we help out and we discuss things that are of interest to Safe Diversity Communities, yes. the nonprofit that's run by the Scott family. Mental health is a huge issue yes. that uh, we're very passionate about. And one of the types of mental illness that we've seen a lot of is Alzheimer's. Uh, many of us may have families where we're still taking care of our parents and our children. Right. And so there's three generations, sometimes in the same household. And when you have the uh, parent that is declining, 
at their capacity, then you want to go ahead and get them evaluated to see if they have Alzheimer's or dementia. And so this month is National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, and we would like people to take a look at uh, different resources to see if you mm -hmm. can help your parents or your elderly uh, relatives and make their quality of life better. And so that's one of the things that we celebrate this month. There's also um, the awareness for America, uh, for cancer research. I'm sorry, which type of cancer? Um, this is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Sorry about that. Um, so for those of you that would like more information, there is the uh, American Association for Cancer Research. That website has a lot of information for um, cancer research, and we would like for you to get involved and see what you can do to participate and help uh, those. It's not just uh, cancer doesn't just affect the patient, it also affects the entire family. And so uh, Safe Diversity supports families that are going through with these struggles, and we yes, would like to um, help you if you need any assistance. Go ahead and contact us. Again, we're at safediversity.org. Uh, one of our emails is safediversity at gmail.com. If you wanted to reach out to us uh, at Safe Diversity Communities for more information about getting resources and support. Thank you. All righty. Now, before we go, I know we got started a little late, but we don't like to close the show because we haven't had our DJ and had a chance to talk. So right now, in the closing of the show, but we want to have our DJ. We always say the best <laughs> DJ at the side of the side of Houston. So we're gonna let you, uh, Mr. Tarr say, say a little bit. Go ahead, Mr. Tarr. All oh, right, you on. I mean, yeah, I know. I've been I've been sitting here on this. I've been looking at myself on the camera. I'm like, gosh, I haven't said anything. I'm just <laughs> just now looking you at not myself. Yes, now you can. Now you can. No, I mean, you know, always. Uh, not much for me to add here, you know. It's what are you doing for very Thanksgiving? You know, oh, for Thanksgiving. Uh, what are you I doing have, for Thanksgiving? Um, I mean, aside from, cooking, I'm huh? not. I mean, I'm not cooking <laughs> anything. You don't want to put me in the kitchen to cook nothing. But uh, you know, maybe ramen noodles or something like that. So mommy's gonna be cooking everything. You're just gonna lay back and eat, huh? Well, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know. There's probably three, four different places that it probably should show up, but I don't know. Right. You gotta, you know, you gotta figure one out. So. You know what? Just you know, make sure that you schedule it so you hit one house around eleven. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna leave a little bit of room for the next one, and a little right, bit of room for right. the next one. And uh huh. <laughs> right. Got to plan this out. Yeah, it's got to so plan any this out. Football games going on that you, you know, care about, or <laughs> not that I care about. <laughs> okay, okay. That would be the thing. I have no idea. I'm sure there are plenty of games going on, but I'm not really a sports guy. So. Well, I am so thankful. Well, my daughter. Miss Deborah Ligon, she's invited me to come and eat. I'm going to go there and eat, and I'm coming right back and watch TV because you, you guys know I'm a <laughs> lifetime person at Hallmark, so I watch TV all day, and I can't miss some good movies that's come on, so I'm going to eat. I might even have them bring me a plate to my house. Yeah, especially during the holidays. Hallmark, Hallmark yeah, Channel, the, just, the Hallmark and especially Lifetime, and like, it's just you know, those, Lifetime has got that Christmas those romantic well. Christmas yeah, movies. That's right, <laughs> Christmas, Christmas movies. movies. I there love you Christmas. <laughs> I want to tell everybody I listen. Miss Scott loved Christmas. It's mm -hmm. not because my birthday is Christmas Day, but since a little girl, I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love Christmas, oh. and I love giving for Christmas. So that is my day. Okay, Miss Johnson, what you got to say about about Thanksgiving? To, you want to say Happy Thanksgiving to your family, your friends out there? Yes, Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, put it put, put it up. Uh, yeah, yes, you, gotta hear. you, gotta you hear. almost hit yourself. I know. <laughs> Please don't talk to at least it's at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, we can we can watch that. We can, we can we cut can, that yeah. out. Go ahead. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving and thank you for listening. And I'm ready to eat. Uh -oh. All right. Oh, okay. okay. So that means so we got plans after <laughs> this. Okay. <laughs> yes, we have we have plans. So, uh, Turner Phillips, I want to thank you for all of these years. It's been my co-host you're awesome and right now before we go we want to give you a hand and say congratulations for winning the president award oh, oh, yeah. right. oh, thank right. you so much president award for my very uh close friend uh sonia white which i love sonia she's like my play doll she is awesome mm -hmm. so i just want to say again congratulations oh, thank you that was an honor you that was that. such a beautiful honor thank yes. you so much i i missed the last radio show but i right. got to see jocelyn and mrs scott a couple of times right at the presidential lifetime achievement award dinner right. and right. then um we had a special dinner 
or a special gathering yes. um, after that. Yes. So I got to see these two beautiful ladies all dressed up, yes. and um, it was it was a very nice event. Thank you, Sonia White, again. She had um, put together a fabulous event. It right. was um, beautiful, and I have a nice award, yes. and um, I appreciate all of that. So um, it was a Lifetime Achievement Award for service work. So mm-hmm. with with all the work that Mrs. Scott has um done with safe with safe diversity communities i've been able to contribute a little bit and um, no you contribute a lot don't say that you, and you I, contribute a lot and thank you for all yeah, that you contribute thank so, you so much it was a wonderful acknowledgement for for all of that so thank you all righty we're going to close the show today and i just want to say happy thanksgiving to everyone from radio Debon and from safe diversity i just want to say it stay safe don't eat too much oh. and remember this you guys <laughs> Uh, Radio the Bond loves you. Safe Diversity loves you. Uh, Flow Events love you. <laughs> guess what? It ain't nothing you can do about it. So goodbye. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>